NASA wants to protect us from a planet-destroying catastrophe and has sent a probe to crash into an asteroid. But one thing is absolutely inexplicable and leaves NASA researchers baffled. Stay tuned to find out what it is and how big the danger of an impact really is. If you like it, I'm galactically happy about a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thanks guys and welcome. I love dinosaurs, but I don't want to end up like them. 66 million years ago, there was a mass extinction of the fearsome lizards. Not all species, but very, very many died, presumably as a result of the impact of a meteorite that was between 10 and 15 kilometers in size. Today it is known as the Chicxulub meteorite and this event is a reminder of the danger that the impact of a cosmic rock can pose. If the meteorite is large enough, such an impact could well mean the end of human civilization. The impact of the Chelyabinsk meteorite in Russia in 2013 was by far not civilization-threatening, but still quite awe-inspiring. Take a look at these original recordings from back then. Nobody died in this impact, but over one and a half thousand people were injured, mostly from the glass that shattered as a result of the impact. But for a meteorite to be really dangerous for us as a species, it has to be much bigger. Researchers have found that a chunk would have to be around 96 kilometers in size to destroy all life on Earth. 96 kilometers is not that huge and we know of asteroids of this size in the solar system. The largest known asteroid, Pallas, discovered by Heinrich Wilhelm Olbers in Bremen, Germany, has a size of 513 kilometers. Here I have simulated for you what it would look like if Pallas were to collide with the Earth. Rather uncomfortable, I would say. Fortunately, Pallas is not on a collision course with the Earth, but there are other chunks out there and collisions can also change the calculated orbits of asteroids. In addition, asteroids from alien star systems can set course for our solar system at any time, like the interstellar visitor Oumuamua a few years ago. To cut a long story short, the risk of a dangerous chunk from outer space hitting us is not immensely high in the short term but it is always there and it will theoretically happen at some point. It's just a question of when, not if. Of course it won't happen today. We really don't have to worry about that at all. By the way, you may have noticed that I've already used the terms meteorite and asteroid in this video. There's also meteor, meteoroid, and comet. Let me know in the comments what the difference is between all these terms and what they mean in detail. I'm sure there are some cosmic language experts among you who can explain it perfectly. Even NASA has recognized that the threat of a devastating impact is very real and has therefore launched Project DART short for double asteroid redirection test. The DART probe was sent to the asteroid Didymos and then made a planned impact on the accompanying asteroid Dimorphos. That's right, the approximately 800 meter asteroid Didymos treats itself to a companion asteroid just like that. Yo, where'd you get that? We need that. We little people are sitting here without any accompanying asteroids. So really, so much for social justice. Little Dimorphos has a diameter of 170 meters and together the two form a double asteroid system. Dimorphos orbits Didymos at an average distance of just one kilometer and the two orbit the sun every 2.1 years. NASA therefore had to calculate exactly when the right time had come to launch the DART mission. But it all worked out wonderfully and on September 26, 2022, the probe hit Dimorphos. How do we know that it worked? Because the DART probe had a second small probe with it called Lycia Cube. In other words, a dual probe that visited a dual asteroid. Beautiful. Lycia Cube undocked 15 days before the impact and then recorded the whole procedure with two optical cameras, which incidentally were named Luke and Leah. Those are the two characters from Star Trek, right? Just three seconds before the impact with Dimorphos, the DART probe took a picture of it, which you can see here. Unbelievable to think that the violent impact occurred only a few seconds later. And here is the very last complete image just 12 kilometers from the surface. We can see that Dimorphos is basically just a lump of dust and rocks, 
probably some kind of construction waste left over from the formation of the inner planets in the solar system four to five billion years ago, which then formed into asteroids. And now I'll show you something really fascinating. The complete approach of DART towards dimorphos up to the impact as a sequence stitched together from the individual images. Here we see a man-made probe that has traveled 17.5 million kilometers and hits an asteroid moon. Sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, but it's reality. Okay, now some of you might be wondering. Why did NASA want to hurt this poor little asteroid? To find out what force is needed to deflect a celestial body, and to what extent. Knowledge that could become very important if a scoundrel like Dimorphos were to be on a collision course with Earth at some point. And indeed, the DART impact reduced Dimorphos' orbital period by 32 minutes. This far exceeded NASA's expectations, which would have considered the mission a success if the orbit around Didymos had been changed by just 73 seconds. The Southern Astrophysical Research Telescope in Chile took this spectacular image of Dimorphos, in which we can see a 10,000-kilometer long tail of splintered material. Almost like some kind of comet. Okay, so it's all peace, joy, and pancakes? We now know that we can throw asteroids off course and everyone is happy? In principle, yes. But one big mystery remains, leaving NASA baffled. The tail formation after the impact was observed with all kinds of telescopes and cameras. Earthbound telescopes such as the SORT telescope in Chile just mentioned, the Lucia Cube has of course also been watching and even the Hubble telescope and James Webb have focused on Dimorphos. And thanks to all these images, we know that a second tail suddenly appeared days after the impact between October 2nd and 5th. And I don't know about you, but when you suddenly have a second tail, something has gone very wrong. Astronomer Jian Yang Li of the Planetary Science Institute says, When I first saw these images, I thought my eyes were deceiving me or that there might be problems with the images. What exactly had happened? The astronomers watched as the second tail formed and the increase in scattered dust reduced the overall brightness of the Didymo system. The team tracked the tail until it faded two and a half weeks later. We know of a few asteroids that are not comets with twin tails, but no one expected Dimorphos to develop such a twin tail. No one knows how to explain this. One theory is that the ejected material from the first tail gradually bounced back onto Dimorphos, causing the second asteroid tail to form some time later. But not all astronomers are convinced of this, because as we now know, the small asteroid consists of super loose dust and grains of rock. The consistency is a bit like a handful of coarse sand. Could this material really have been capable of producing such a violent impact? In the meantime, the second tail has disappeared and NASA is still at a loss as to how exactly it could have formed. If you have any good ideas, please let me know in the comments, maybe we can solve the asteroid mystery together. Incidentally, the analysis of the dark data is still in full swing and we now know, for example, that Dimorphos lost over a million kilograms of material as a result of the impact. Can NASA please have one of these probes hit my fat belly? So the DART mission has been a complete success so far, and NASA really has no shortage of successes. The James Webb Telescope also continues to deliver spectacular results and has now discovered six galaxies at the beginning of time, shortly after the Big Bang, which should not exist. Researchers are already talking about Universe Breaker galaxies. The original recordings of these impossible galaxies, which have plunged cosmology into a crisis, can be seen in the video below. Be sure to check it out and if you don't have any ideas for Christmas presents this year and want to support my work, don't forget to visit the Astro Shop. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care guys.